Hi guys, my name's Sean O'Collins. I've had my own data analytics and database training and consulting company for about 13 years now. Um, this video is about how I passed the PL300 Power BI exam two days ago. Uh, it's the exact steps and there's a PDF download as well. So please get that, it's the test prep questions. By the way, it's a nice winter's morning here in Sydney. Uh, I'm about eight kilometers from the city. Look at that, they cut the log in half, that's cool. Uh, this is where I live. It's a nice little nature reserve uh, in the middle of a residential area. All right, good luck my friends, bye bye. How to pass the Power BI Data Analyst PL300 exam. The good news for me is that I passed it two days ago. Here's the badge on my LinkedIn. Um, I got 875 and don't forget when you do get it, you link it to, see here it says credly.com. So yeah, that's the website that Microsoft is partnered with to um, help display certifications and to verify them. All right, so how did I do it? This video is all about me stepping you through the exact process I went through. And if you copy what I did, there's no reason why you won't get the same result. All right, so let's go. So this is the exam we're talking about, PL300. So make sure you read through this page. Um, it's got all the information about the exam. So one other thing that I did is I wrote an article yesterday also as a backup to what I'm gonna go over now in this video. Here is the article here. It's on my website, analystlaunch.com. So before I get started, let me just tell you my skill level before I actually started studying for the exam, because this is important. Everybody is starting at a different level from beginner to advanced. I would say I was intermediate. I definitely wasn't advanced. I've been using Power BI for probably two years, but I use it on and off, meaning I don't use it every day. I use it maybe a couple of times a week. I don't really use it that much, um, but I'm definitely familiar with it and I've definitely used it. So what I'm trying to say is there were massive gaps in my knowledge. So that's where I was starting at. Now, one thing that I did is I booked the exam before I started the test preparation. The reason why I did that is a psychological reason. Uh, I like to have a fixed date that I have to plan for. I was a bit of an idiot. I booked it for two <laughs> two weeks. Um, I, was, I was giving myself two weeks to study for the exam. I'll go over in a minute what happened, but yeah, I, I recommend three weeks, but yeah, I, I booked two weeks. Now let's go over the actual test preparation guides I used. So there are many out there. I did a lot of research. I used two test preparation guides. All right. The first one is the measure up one and I got the 30 day, oh, the price has gone up. I didn't pay that much. Anyway, I got the 30 day access because obviously that's all I felt that I needed. So you get whichever one you like. It's more expensive, the more, more access. Really, I think you only need to get the 30 day one. Just make sure that you're ready to start practicing straight away as soon as you buy it. The other one that I went through is the exam topics. They have a free tier as well. So you can just do the free questions if you want, um, or you can pay and get all access if you want to. Now, the one thing with doing these two test preparation guides is they are difficult for me that were difficult. The first time I did the measure up one, I got about 60%, correct? In other words, I would have failed the exam. So that was a real wake up call for me because I didn't actually know how difficult the exam was going to be. Um, then I, at this stage, I started to worry a little bit. I thought, wow, two weeks isn't really going to be enough. So what I did is I actually went back to Pearson View. Pearson View is the name of the company that runs the exams for Microsoft. And I actually rescheduled the exam and gave myself an extra week. Um, so I had three weeks in total. So yeah, I spent about a week on the first try. Second time I studied a lot and got 85%. And then finally, um, I really focused on my problem areas. And at the end on measure up and exam topics, I was getting 96%. And if I did it again, I probably would have got close to 100%. So yeah, the main tip I can give you if you do those two test preps, make sure you're getting close to 100% on both. It's very, very important because the exam is difficult. I mean, unless you're an absolute expert, the exam is difficult, all right? For me, it was difficult. So by getting 100% on both of those test preps, I really was confident um, that I was ready. 
So here is the company that I did it with, Pearson View. I did the at home version of it on my own computer. I'll go over how you set up a computer and set up your room for that in a minute. So the other resource I used a lot was the official Power BI documentation from Microsoft. Here's the page here. It's a boring read. You don't obviously read the whole thing. There's way too much information here. But what you do is you use it as a reference guide, all right? Use it as a reference guide. If you don't know how to do something, first thing I did is I would search on Google and invariably the Power BI documentation would be one of the first links. So you just go and find exactly what you need to learn and you just read that page, all right? You don't read the whole thing. You use it as a reference guide. There were three YouTube channels that I used all of the time. I find this guy really, really good. His YouTube is Solutions Abroad. I tried many, many different YouTube content creators to help me in preparation. And they really, the quality really varies greatly. Like some have really bad audio or some have really strong accents and I didn't understand, or some were just really boring or some didn't know how to edit properly. This guy is really good. I really recommend him, all right? Solutions Abroad. The other one I like is Radicad. He's really good as well, this dude. Um, he edits it and he's good at explaining and he sets up good scenarios to, to show how to actually do things. The other one is Pragmatic Works. They're really good as well. They've got tons of, tons of content. Um, and for beginners, they actually have a, I think it's about a three hour course. So you should find that like a beginner Power BI if you're starting from nothing. I actually did that um, a while ago. It's actually really good. Now, one other thing is Microsoft actually have their own preparation guide. So if you go to the exam page and you go down, it has it here. It's their own learning path. So you can see here, learning path, get started, and you go through this whole thing. Now, here's the thing. I didn't do the learning path. <laughs> I didn't, I tried to do it. So you can see here, I've actually clicked on that first one and I started it. I just found it so boring that I just couldn't do it. I just, my mind, my mind just couldn't stay focused because the delivery was so cold and so boring that I just couldn't do it. Now, I'm telling you that because I'm telling you exactly what I did, all right? I don't want to go here and tell you that I did this and I did that and I didn't actually do it, all right? So I didn't do it. Now, you do what you have to do, but I'm just telling you, I didn't do this because uh, it was too boring. The point is you can't do everything. You have to focus your attention on the one, two or three things that are going to give you the most bang for your buck and give you the best chance in the least amount of time of passing this exam. So back to my article. Now the time commitment, what I did is I spent three full weeks and I averaged three hours per day of full on study. So that's 63 hours in total. When I say three hours a day, I mean full on complete concentration. I really made a big effort to get through all this content. All right, so let's talk about the day of the exam. So as I said, I booked it through Pearson View. I booked the at home method of doing it. You can do it in a classroom if you want. When you book the exam, you can book it directly from the Microsoft site here, schedule exam, or you can go to the Pearson View site and they'll link you through to the exam as well. Just one thing, when you do it at home, you have to set up your room properly and prepare your computer. Now there are two really good videos that you should watch that show you actually how to prepare. It's by this lady here, um, Lisa Crosby. Really helpful, it's just 14 minutes. It's called Before Your First Microsoft Certification Exam. So just watch that. Uh, it shows you how to set up your room properly. So the, the proctor, proctor is the person who watches you when you're doing the exam. You know, you can't have things just laying around. You have to have your desk clear. You have to sort of cover up all your books and stuff. You can't have things laying around that the proctor can think that you're trying to cheat or something like that, all right? So watch this video. The other good one she's got is this one. And that's her exam tips on actually the way she goes about answering the questions quickly. All right, now let's talk about the day of the exam. So I was scheduled for 10.30 in the morning. I went through the process of starting up the exam. So I had to upload pictures of my ID and take photos of my room. And then something really bad happened. I got this message. Hmm, something went wrong. Please go back to previous screen. The problem was there is no, bat there is no way to go back. You can't get out of the software. So I waited and then nothing, nothing happened. So what I had to do is control alt delete and then with full knowledge that this is gonna wreck my whole exam because there's no way. I've got a tip here on my website. Do not do the exam at home 
unless you have a super reliable, fast internet. If you've got the type of internet that every five minutes it goes off for a couple of seconds, it's not gonna work. My internet is very stable. I've been using the same internet for five years and I've never had a problem running any other software or I just, I don't notice any problems in the internet at all. But it just seems that Pearson View seems to pick up, I don't know what it's picking up. Maybe it needs super fast speeds or something. But look, I got through the exam. But if you have any problems at all with your internet at home, then I wouldn't do it at home. I'd go to a testing center. And I say that because after the exam, I actually had a look around and I found a lot of people actually were complaining about the same error message. Here's a person here. Hmm, something went wrong. They got the same message. And if you read that, it said this was really painful. This person actually couldn't finish the exam. And then, yeah, you don't. There's like, who are you going to contact? <laughs> there's no one to contact. I mean, you can you email customer support, of course, but you're going to be going through days and days of email back and forth until you can try and get a refund or try and reschedule it. So, yeah, just be really careful with that. Okay, so I finally got into the exam. Let's talk about actually doing the exam. So I had, I believe it was 54 questions and I had a 100 minutes to do the exam. Um, now, when I say 54 questions, you, you have to remember some of the questions are broken up into two or three answers. So in other words, one question may have three different parts and each part may be worth one point. So one question may be worth three points. So in reality, I worked it out. There's probably about 80 different answer points. So 80 different individual answers you have to give. So if you think about it very roughly, you have about 90 seconds to answer each question. It's just really not much time at all. Now, when someone asked me and I said, yeah, it's difficult, it's difficult because of the time limit. I mean, if you gave me five hours to do the exam, yeah, I'm going to get a high mark. But give me 100 minutes, give me 90 seconds for each question, and it becomes really difficult. The problem is, is that some of the questions had big blocks of text that you had to read and interpret, and you have to do that really quickly. This is where the test preps became really, really important, because I remember when I first started doing the test preps, I thought, oh, this is really hard. But after you've read, <laughs> after you've read 100 of the questions and practiced, you can actually become really quick at it. So the test preps really got me through this. Um, there's no way I would have passed without doing the test preps. So a few tips, look at the question and answer options first before actually reading the case study. So at the beginning of my exam, I had a case study. I um, mean, you have to read through a bunch of stuff. You have to look at the tables. You have to look at the requirements. What I did is I actually went straight to the questions first. So I read the question and I read all the answer options. So I knew sort of what they were looking for. Then I went back to the case study and read through it fairly quickly. And then I could notice straight away where, what they were looking for and how I could answer the question. Another thing is in a question, when they have a specific term, I've just made up this term here. If they say something like customer service manager security permissions, that's a very specific term. So what you do is you go back to the case study and you look for that term. You look for the term and there might be 20 different sentences. You just have to quickly scan through, try and find it. And then you read the sentence that it's in, maybe read the sentence before and the sentence after again. And I generally find that that's going to give you the information you need to be able to answer the, answer the question. So they have at the top left of the screen, they have something called mark questions for review. Um, and that's where obviously you put down your answer. And if you're not sure at the end of the exam, if you've got time, you can go back and have a look at it again. I did that with five questions. I was lucky I did because when I went back, one of the questions which had three options, I had only actually only put in one tick when I should have put in three different ones. I don't know how that happened. I was stunned when I saw it. It's either I had a problem with my internet or they have a problem with their software or it's possible somehow I just didn't see the option. So for whatever reason, I was lucky that I spotted it and then I put in the three. I don't know if I got the question right, but please remember you don't lose marks for wrong answers. So make sure you always put in a guess if you don't know something, all right? So I've got some final tips here. Make sure you're getting 100% in the test prep before you attempt the exam. Now, one other thing included in this video is a PDF. I put together my own test prep document when I was doing it and I'm sharing it with you for free, zero. I'm not charging anything. Here it is here. I haven't published it yet. It's a document. It's got a lot of very typical type questions and it's just a free resource for you to help you. Um, maybe you've, you're struggling and you've got no money. Again, the same advice, make sure you're getting 100%. 
I'll have the questions and the answers there and you just keep practicing with that, all right? Make sure you download it. Okay, another tip, spend some time on Reddit reading other people's experiences of the exam. So here's the link. So you go to Reddit, you can see here, PL300 Reddit, and there's lots and lots of different entries of people talking about the exam. A lot of them just give their personal experience, what they're doing, what worked for them, what didn't work for them. I really learn a lot by going through all of these. When you look through it, just make sure you look at entries that are within, say, the last year. Don't look at really old ones because the exams get changed. You see here, this one's from 8th of March. That's a good one for you to read. I actually read that and um, the person's asking how they should prepare. And then a lot of people at the bottom have come in and said how they pass the exam. For example, this guy, just took and passed today, got 910. He says he did the Udemy course. So go and have a read through that as well. Okay, another thing I did is I had Power BI desktop and the service, the online service open throughout the whole time I was doing the test preps so I could practice. It's just a good way to really get it in your memory. Now remember that I booked it for two weeks in advance, but then I rescheduled. If you feel you're not ready or you're not gonna pass, just reschedule it. Don't stress out about it. Uh, it was free to reschedule uh, and I did it online in like 10 minutes, no problem. So as I said, I booked in advance. The reason why that worked for me is because it stopped me procrastinating and it stopped me chickening out. Again, for me personally, I, I didn't tell anyone I was doing it. I just didn't need the extra pressure. So, you know, you do you on that. Organize your time. Again, I needed about three hours a day for three weeks. Um, so, you know, a lot of you are working, a lot of you are doing other things. Just make sure that you have the right amount of time. So again, I was at about intermediate level and I needed it about 63 hours to prepare. This last point's important. You really have to know at lo what level you're at. If you're a complete beginner, meaning if you just have never used Power BI before, you can still do it. But before you even look at test preps, you need to learn the platform, all right? So there are some very good courses on YouTube for free. Pragmatic Works have them. So I'd say go through and do all those free courses on YouTube. Um, you can get a course on Udemy, it's fairly cheap, but spend a couple of months. I would say if you're starting from zero, spend a couple of months just really learning Power BI. And then after two months, then maybe get the test prep and spend a month on the test prep. So I think in three months, if you study hard, yeah, you could be ready for the exam. And the opposite to that, if you're really advanced already, like if you're a Power BI professional and you use it every day, you may only need one week to prepare. So look, that's the process. That's what I went through. So again, at the end of it, make sure you put it on your LinkedIn because employers... I know for a fact employees love it. Um, and also it just helps you spread your network. Like I put mine up, you can see I only did it, I put it up one day ago and I've had 23 people like it. I went through these people and some of them are like working at large companies. I work for myself, so it's not, a, it's not really an issue for me, but um, if you actually apply for jobs, it actually can really help you. Okay guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. So I wish you luck, all the best.